Alright, what's good y'all? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. Finally got something to talk or talk about around here. Finally got some news. I mean, I know it's technically bad, but bro, at this point, good, bad, negative, positive, in between. I'll take anything at this point just to make a video about because bro, I go weeks without making a video at this point because it's just dry out here. Nothing interesting enough for me to talk about but now we finally got something even though it's uh relatively bad uh so first i'm gonna give you all the cliff notes version and then i'm gonna get a little bit into the weeds with the statement from bungie so bungie is laying off 220 people if you remember they did a layoff they did a bunch of layoffs i want to say earlier it was like early this year that wasn't last year that was early this year when, when they did the previous layoffs right so they're laying off 220 people, uh, 155 people, um, uh, 155 of their staff and developers are moving to other Sony studios or um, somewhere in the Sony umbrella, doesn't specify where. Um, and so, and 75 are specifically moving to a new studio that they are, that PlayStation is founding. Um, so they were shrinking from 1,300 to 850 people. So let's read this statement. So that's the, that was the Cliff Notes version. Let's read this statement from their CEO, Pete Parsons, who everybody seems to fucking hate. They, they, from all accounts, this guy is a piece of shit. Now, I don't know Bungie enough as a developer like, I don't know the insides and outsides, you know, for, for studios I care about, I try to know like some of the people there, you know, the, how the studio functions, just details about the studio. Bungie is not a developer I care about personally, so I know virtually nothing about them. Like people, when I hear people talk about Bungie, they, they know the composer's name, they know the CEO, they know the, I know jack shit about Bungie because they're, they're just not a studio I give a fuck about because they don't really make games that I personally care about right now. Of course, you know, I've, I've beaten all the halos and shit like that, but I'm talking about in current time, they're not a studio I give a fuck about because I don't even like Destiny. So I know virtually nothing about them, but a lot of people tend to know their inner workings. So before I get to the, uh, the statement made by their CEO that everybody hates, so I saw this article that said, you know, there's been a lot of layoffs in the gaming industry uh, this year, even stemming from last year. So in 2024, we're eight months in, um, there's been 20,000 jobs cut in the gaming industry this year, 20,000. Listen, I, I, even before these layoffs, I've always considered like game development, probably one of the, the, the if, if you want to make a list of the least stable, stable jobs, oh yeah, the, the jobs with the least security, Gaming development, in my opinion, has always been there. Of course, it depends on where you're at, what studio you work for, what publisher. But yeah, they've all, it's always been at the top. It's just a very volatile industry, very unstable industry. Um, a, one that I love to cover, but I, I understood very early, like when I started YouTube, I'm like, yeah, I would never want to like, not obviously not be a game developer, um, but like other parts of it, because, you know, there are parts of game development aside from being a, de a developer. I would I, I would want to be media at most and talk about it and cover it, but never be a part of it. That shit is just terrible. Um, so, yeah, 20,000 jobs lost. All right. So here's the statement from Pete Parsons. I'm gonna try to go through this, break it down, um, my thoughts and all that. Uh, let's get through this quick. Uh, this morning, I'm sharing with all of you some of the most difficult changes we've ever had to make as a studio due to rising costs of game of, of development and industry shifts, as well as uh, enduring economic conditions. It has become clear that we need to make substantial changes to our cost structure and focus development efforts entirely on Destiny and Marathon. I feel like so he's not wrong about the the rising cost of development and industry shifts, but I kind of feel like he's using that as a scapegoat because if I believe what other people is people are saying, Destiny, the management and which you know the C suite, 
all of them, they're terrible. So it's partly due to, to that and a whole lot of bad business decisions based on, based on what I'm told. So he's not wrong, but I don't think he's, he's painting the whole picture. He's like placing all of the blame on almost all of the blame on uh, rising costs in game development and industry shifts. I did see a headline that said that they felt like they, they were too ambitious. And if you remember, I'm, I, I've been telling y'all for a long time, that ambition word is one of the worst fucking things to hear in game development. It is the death of so many freaking projects, the death of so many studios, that they tried to be too ambitious. Now, I think I skimmed through this and I didn't actually see that, that quote where he mentioned, mentioned them being too ambitious, but maybe I'll get, I'll get to it uh, when, I, when I read through this again. Um, so, he, so he goes on to say, that means beginning today, 220 of our roles are being eliminated, representing roughly 17% of our studio's workforce. If you... I've read so many of these like uh, restructuring or layoff announcements that I feel like I'm an expert at like reading in between the lines and the bullshit. And I said this about another another announcement. They always try to like they don't put that percentage in there for accuracy or to be up front. They do it to try to downplay in my I think that's why they do it. it it's because. If you say, oh, we laid off 17% of our workforce, that doesn't sound as bad as 220. Even though they led with the 220, it's like, oh, no, don't worry about it. It's only, it's only 17%. Not a big deal. F relax. That, that's, that's what I believe that 17% is for. Uh, okay. These actions will affect every level of our company, including most of our executive and senior leader roles. Like, like I said, from what I've seen and what people I've seen people have said, the C-suite and the, you know, all the executives and the leadership at Bungie are the problem and they're t too top heavy. So I guess that makes sense. Um, today is a difficult and painful day, especially from, uh, for our departing colleagues, all of which have made uh, important and valuable contributions to Bungie, blah, 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 blah. Uh, generous exit, exit package, including severance, bonus, and health coverage. I've said this before. This is why I don't really be feeling that bad for people who get laid off. Like, yeah, I'm sure some of them love their job and it sucks to lose your job. I've told people it's not like I'm talking from a perspective where I've never been affected. I've been laid off. But that severance package was fire. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I did not. When I got laid off, I didn't feel bad. That severance package was boy, That shit was generous. So. If you get laid off and it's some bullshit severance, bro, I got laid off and I was like, oh, damn. And, and I was always, I'm always confident, you know, in my experience and my resume. I, I found like an equal job, like literally two months later. And like I said, that severance package. Oh, yeah, this it, it almost it was, it's almost like like a vacation. Like I, like I got paid. You're really getting paid to do nothing. You're getting a whole bunch of paychecks ahead of time because i got a lump sum so it was like yo i got paid for shit that i ain't even do i'm like this is fire i'm like this th this is because you know prior to that i was never laid off and it's like i was like yo people act like being laid off is the worst thing ever i'm like yo this this shit ain't too bad this shit ain't too bad depending on the company you work for of course <laughs> but i was like yo this shit ain't this shit ain't half bad i'm just saying um yeah i got health coverage um severance oh i, I got the same thing he's talking about um, he said, I realize all of this is hard news, especially following the, the success of Final Shape. Yeah, because Final Shape did really well. Um, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, just a bunch of jargon and PR talk. Okay, we are committed to other, uh, we are committing to two other changes, major changes today that we believe will uh, support our focus, leverage Sony's strength, and create new opportunities for Bungie's talent. First, we are deepening our integration with Sony Interactive Entertainment, working to integrate five, 155 of our roles, roughly 12%, into SIE over the next few quarters. SIE has worked tirelessly with us to identify roles uh, for as many of our people as possible, enabling us, uh, enabling us together to save a great deal of talent that would otherwise have been affected by the reduction in force. If you remember, 
Sony gave them a huge bonus for retention, for employee retention when they first bought Bungie, right? Big bonus, because it was a $3.6 billion, and like at least a million of that was literally just for bonuses and, and to encourage people to, to stay, in all, and stay in all that stuff. And they even promised like, oh, no, there's not going to be Bungie promise. There's not going to be any layoffs and all and all of that stuff. And obviously, we, we all remember that they are they're, they're not under the umbrella of PlayStation. They're under the umbrella of Sony. And what this integration partially sounds like is them. They, I believe and most people probably believe now that they are going to they are going to be folded under PlayStation because. From the last time we saw the agreement, the, the last time we, we saw the announcement for layoffs, I forgot the, the exact words, but essentially what we learned is if Bungie didn't start meeting certain criteria and standards, PlayStation, they were going to be folded under PlayStation because up until now, Sony allowed them to, you know, be, in the, be independent you know, and not be under the, you know, the, the absolute rule of PlayStation. Now that's probably going to change because that probably was, you know, you had to hold up your end of the bargain to continue to function somewhat independently. Even though Final Shape was a success, it doesn't seem like you have held up your end of the bargain by all accounts. So, and I think like, listen, not that PlayStation doesn't have some, uh, mistakes, of course, with, uh, you know, studios, every every publisher has. But overall, PlayStation is a great manager and a, gr a great steward of their of their studios. Overall, doesn't mean they, they, don't, they don't fuck up here and there. Um, but over. So I don't see that as a bad thing. If bad thing, if they're folded on, under PlayStation. Uh, what else is second? We are working with PlayStation Studio leadership to spin out one of our incubation projects, an action game set in a brand new science fantasy universe to form a new studio within PlayStation Studios to continue its promising development. So PlayStation is getting a new small studio out of this. Um, a new studio with about, set, what was it, 75 people? They're, they're getting something out of this. So they're getting, it's not... I guess it's like, okay, they're trying to get what out of, you know, what positive squeeze, what positive, uh, you know, possibility out of this that they can out of this, out of this situation. Um, obviously not a great situation, but they're trying to, you know, turn this into something positive and make good business decisions. Now, uh, you get a, you get a new small studio. Hopefully they stay small that is working on this, you know, action game. I mean. Who knows how that's going to turn out, though, right? We hear all the time about studio veterans split off and are working on this passion project, if you will. And a lot of this, a lot of them don't turn out so well. A lot of them you never hear, hear about again. A lot of them just, just don't manifest into anything. So we got to see how we don't even know the studio name. We got to see how that shit works out. Yeah, PlayStation, it's a new studio, and they specify it's under PlayStation Studios. But who the fuck knows? That, like, that, in all, honestly, in all honesty, that shit could get even shut down in, by next year. You know, there's, uh, there's no promise in that. But there's potential. And I would ho and one thing I've been saying is PlayStation needs some smaller studios that stay small, that work on maybe something like, uh, a double A. So if that's something that that studio's working on, cool. Keep them that size. Don't grow them. Yeah. Uh. So we'll see how we'll see how that turns out. So they still own Bungie, and now they got another another studio working on a different game out of the situation. Cool. Now a lot of people have the have have said that Bungie. Now my feelings on Bungie when they acquired Bungie. Like, you can go watch the video I made when they acquired Bungie. It's still up. I said I, I'm indifferent to this because I'm not a Bungie fan. Like, when I hear PlayStation buys Bungie, that doesn't excite me in any type of way or manner. I'm like, oh, okay, Bungie, 
cool. Uh, the 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 thing that probably sound sounded at the time the best to me was them kind of being this this uh, games as a service um, expert and consultant and kind of helping the other studios that were going to be working on games as a service. Yeah, I mean. I, I don't think that's manifested into any any great decisions that have benefited me yet. But at the time, that was the only thing that was kind of like, okay, I'm cool with that. I the, the game development side of Bungie specifically wasn't something I was excited about as far as the acquisition goes. Because, okay, it's Destiny, it's Marathon. I still don't really know what the fuck... Mar Does any, do, do any of us really know what the hell Marathon is? I don't think we do. Um, so until I see... like a substantial amount of marathon. No, I, I don't give a fuck. Like Bungie is just a, 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 a studio I'm completely indifferent to um, until I see something I like. Um, but a lot of people like say like, this is the worst acquisition PlayStation has made. Um, I might agree with you in terms of like dollar amount that they paid for. Now, I don't remember how much PlayStation, because my argument might be Firewalk. I don't remember how much PlayStation paid for Firewalk. I'm not sure if that was even announced. Uh, and the only reason I might make that argument is because, yeah, it says an undisclosed sum. The, the reason I might make that argument is because even though I'm indifferent to Bungie, I feel like Bungie has a higher ceiling and a higher upside than Firewalk, right? Firewalk with... And it's funny enough, Firewalk is made up of a bunch of veterans that from Bungie that worked on De that worked on Destiny and I want to say they worked on they worked on Destiny. I want to say Siege and a few other shooters. I can't remember exactly where they where they came from, but they worked on some big AAA games from some respected studios. So I think Bungie, even though like things are fucking up for them now. They have a higher upside to me than Firewalk does with because like regardless of how I feel about Destiny, Destiny is a franchise hit. If they make a Destiny 3, we know it's up with that. We, we know that shit is, is a banger. That's a big deal if they ever, ever make a Destiny 3. So we've seen the, the talent with Bungie. Firewalk, I'm like, eh, Concord is going to be dead in three weeks. So... Like, that's why I say in dollar amount, I can understand why you would say Bungie, but I think they have a higher, higher upside and a higher ceiling and more potential than a studio like Firewalk, with, which Sony purchased before, they even, before we even saw uh, Concord, right? And what, what, were, what, what were their games even before Concord? Because I, I can't remember Firewalk's situation before sony because sony didn't found them right didn't they make one game before didn't they make one game before uh being acquired by playstation i can't remember i can't remember their history i'm trying to look it up right now fire firewalk was established in 2018 as a subsidiary of probably monsters by veterans of game companies such as bungie and activision so more Bungie, Bungie and, and Activision veterans are just like fucking everywhere in, in this, in this situation. It's, it's just kind of funny how like they're on the, the front lines of failure is always led by veterans of Bungie and Activision. Um, so cool. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Who worked for doesn't even probably monsters collaborated with PlayStation, uh, maker of Sony. So yeah, that's. That's what it came from. They had then they had a par, uh, a partnership in 2021, and then PlayStation announced it acquired Firewalk from probably Monsters. But yeah, Bungie at least has a, a big IP. Firewalk has fuck all. Is my point. They have fuck all. Um, back to the uh, the statement. Where where the where the hell was I? Um, secondly, we are, yeah, they're working on an incubation project. Um, reading, reading, reading. For over five years, it has been our goal to ship games in three enduring global franchises to realize that ambition. 
we set up that, that ambition word again. We set up several incubation projects, uh, each each seated with senior development leaders from our existing teams. Uh, we eventually realized that this model stretched our talent too thin. Yeah. What is with, I don't, I don't know, what is it with these studios? And, I, I, and I've said this before and people call me crazy. If you're working, most of these studios are really only working on one project. Like, meaningful work. A lot of them will say, oh yeah, we're working on three different projects. Let me tell you what that means. If there's 500 people at that studio, 450 of them are working on that main project and they have like a few, they have like a skeleton crew working on the other two projects, making almost no progress at all. I'm telling you that's, what, that's what's happening. And that's been pretty much proven. This, I've been saying that like, listen, if, you, if you're working on three, if you're working on multiple projects, you're really only working on one. It's like, it's like in the NFL, if they say, if you have three quarterbacks, you really got none. It's kind of like that situation. You really can only make significant progress on one project at a time because of everything that game development requires for you to even get anywhere with it. So once they finish one project, the, that skeleton crew uh, that may have did some basic foundational stuff, now when everybody else joins them, they're going to make some progress. But until then, them shits go nowhere. Until them shits are going nowhere, I'm telling you. So, so it's always this mistake where they try to spread to, and the problem don't even be they're working. They're really working on multiple projects. They're, they'd be working on multiple projects, and the and the size and scope of all three projects be fucking huge. It'd be all AAA games. It, it's it's one thing if you know most of the people were working on a AAA game, and then you had like a, a little maybe indie project. That didn't don't require that many developers, but no, like they they be working on like three different projects that are all AAA. You ain't gonna get nowhere like that. That, that ain't gonna work. So it, it's bullshit. I don't know why they be doing that, bro. Like so many studios have just faltered by by doing that. And it's like, bro, y'all gotta stop. Y'all gotta stop, bro. It's it it doesn't work even for the biggest studios with. Unless you're like a Ubisoft, it works. It works for like like Ubisoft maybe because they got crazy amount of developers and multiple studios like all working on like that stuff, right? So they can do that, but the average developer can't do that. You, you can't, you can't do that, dog. They gotta, they gotta stop this practice. Um. Oh, here, here's a statement. We were overly ambitious. Uh, our financial safety margins were su uh, subsequently exceeded and we began running in the red. Well, there's some accountability there. Some accountability. So cool, cool. Um, additionally, in 2023, our rapid expansion ran headlong into a broad economic slowdown, a sharp downturn in the games industry. Our quality uh, missed with Destiny 2 Lightfall and we need to give both the final shape and marathon the time needed to ensure both projects deliver at the quality our players expect and deserve. Uh, where was it? Um, yeah, on top of the statement he made about being stretched too thin, it also forced our studios, our studio support structure to scale to a larger level than we could realistically support. Given our two primary products in development, one thing... One thing that always bothers me about game development is like there's so many other situations that developers could look at as a cautionary tale that tell them, yo, this is a bad idea. But they still seem to do that. The, the same shit they've seen other studios do that lead to complete and utter failure. It's not like the game industry at this point is like this uncharted territory where okay, as a studio, we want to try something, be, you know, be ambitious and, 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 and we're unsure of how it could turn out because there's, there's not like a precedence of, or a situation we can look at to see how it turns out. No, there's plenty of situations where you can look at and see how it turned out horribly. So it's like, bro, look around. 
look around at the other look around at the mistakes others are making and you could have made your decisions from there uh so i'm at the end of this as a result today we must say goodbye to incredible talent blah 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 uh it's a hard week we need to process um Town meetings, town halls, team breakout sessions. Uh, Bungie will continue to make great games. We have 850 team members making Destiny, working on Destiny and Marathon. And yeah, yada, yada, yada. Pete. Signed Pete. All right. So, yeah. Um, so, as I said, I think PlayStation is going to do a takeover. And they should. Uh, this, so... As far as like the CEO hate, people need to criticize CEOs for doing, for making bad decisions, mad, bad business decisions. But I see, we, I always see these like weird articles and it, it's funny on the internet. If you say things about this, people act like you're defending a CEO. Like, no, I'm just making logical statements, right? A CEO should be crucified for, for making bad business decisions that hurt the company. But CEOs should not be crucified for making a lot of money. If I'm being honest, I think a lot of people are jealous of CEOs because they, have, they make a boatload of cash, right? They, they're pretty much, they're millionaires. I don't think that's a reason to hate on somebody. And if we're being, I think if we're being, you know, honest with ourselves, people are just jealous because they see how much money somebody's making. I'm like, like man, I, I don't, I'm not one of those people who get mad at like millionaires and billionaires. There's people out there who are simply mad at millionaires and billionaires for just being millionaires and billionaires, like regardless of if they do a good job or not. I think, bro, like I saw an article from Kotaku's talking about all oh, this Pete. Pete Parsons, um, I believe is his name. He spent, uh, you know, millions of dollars on on some cars, you know, a few days ago or whenever it is. And he was showing it off to employees. Now, showing it off to your employees a little bit right before they get laid off. Bad idea. But if he not if he's just using that money from his salary, bro, I got no problem with that. I got no problem with that. If you do a bad job, you should get fired. But a man using somebody using the money from their salary. I'm like, bro, why, why are you all mad? Why are you, why are you mad at that? And there's always like this, this sentiment like, oh man, CEOs should sacrifice their salary to, uh, keep those laid off people employed. And, and from what I've seen, people have actually done that math. I'm not the math guy, but people have done that math. And even if CEOs actually decided to sacrifice their salary to keep a bunch of people on somebody I've seen somebody do the math. They wouldn't be able to keep that. Those, all those employees, um, paid for that long anyway, because it's a, it's still a lot of people to pay and, and, and upkeep. So sacrificing your salary in the long run really wouldn't do much anyway. Right. And, and the reason why CEOs get paid as much as they do is because Bro, salaries are salaries are based on the difficulty of the job and how many people there are to that qualify to do that job. The lesser people there are that are qualified and the higher the 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 more skill, knowledge and experience that job requires, yeah, people are going to get paid for a lot for those jobs. That's 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 how things work. That's how all jobs work. The reason why somebody and not shitting at nobody, not shitting on nobody that works at McDonald's, but the reason why people at, you know, that work at McDonald's get paid minimum wage is because you can pick a random person off the street, say, hey, you want to be a cashier at McDonald's? They could probably do it. They could probably do it. You can't pick, you can't get, you can't find a random person on the street and out of a lineup, many, 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 many mo, say, hey, you want to be a CEO? No, they can't do the job. So that's why they get paid like that. I'm, I'm just saying that's why they get paid like that. Once again, if you do a bad job, you should get fired. But I'm not going to get mad at somebody for getting paid for a position that demands and justifies that much money. So attack the man for doing a bad job, not because he gets paid for that job. Um, 
but yeah, he I mean it, it, that that is what it is. Um, a lot. Oh yeah, there's been, I, I've seen tweets. They killing this man online. Like actual Bungie or Bungie employees or former Bungie employees. They're killing this guy. They're telling him he he's a liar. He's a thief. This Liana Rupert. She's a assuming it's a she. Um, she worked at Destiny. She she I mean she worked at Bungie. Um, co- was this community manager? Looks like she might have been a community manager. Uh, she said you're a liar, a thief, and so many things we can't discuss publicly. Uh, please step down without the giant Sony payout. This isn't on Sony. This is squarely at the failure of leadership, plain and simple. And yeah, I just I just been seeing a bunch of tweets of people who worked with him, worked for him, just killing this guy, saying he's a terrible CEO, and and the whole C C suite is just garbage. And terrible. I mean, I've been hearing that from Bungie fans, Bungie employees. That that seems to be the 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 belief, and the you know that seems to be the overwhelming feeling all the way around. Is this guy just sucks at his job? So they should probably get rid of him. He should probably step down. Um, yeah. Um, I think those are, I think those are all all my all my thoughts and and things like that. Um. Yeah, and people always like bring up like my uh my stance on multiplayer when when with when it comes to all of this stuff. My stance on multiplayer doesn't change, right? People need to understand I don't the failures, the 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 multiplayer failures, whether it be studio shutdowns, whatever, doesn't deter my desire for good multiplayer, it never will. It never will. So I, it's like I I kind of wish people would stop asking me that. Nothing is going to change my desire for multiplayer. Like, fail, failures happening isn't going to change that. I would, of course, I want good multiplayer and I want successful ones, but I will take as many failures as is needed to get to the successful one that I like. You know, that's, that's my, my stance on it. It doesn't matter to me how many failures have to come before that. I'm not going to give up on that because listen, it it is my stance if you as a publisher, you have a platform that you charge people to play on. If you charge people to play on it, then you have to provide games for people to play on it. That's the simple foundational logic in what I'm saying. So, no, I'm not going to say, "Oh, because um aside from maybe one game, the rest have failed mainly because of the reasons I've stated. And, and I think they're going about it the wrong way. And there, there is a right way to go about this. Um, it's, it's still something I believe you, you have a responsibility to pursue and provide that product. So none of this stuff means no, nothing to me. It, it, it means nothing to me, deter me. I don't think they should stop trying to make games as a service or, or multiplayer games or nothing like that. No, that, doesn't change anything for me i was never on board with them i don't know how how many it was in initially like i didn't think they needed to try 12 but i was never on board with that but I, I my point was they needed to try so hey man whatever it takes to me it's it's whatever it takes to finally figure it out and get there i don't think because something fails you 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 stop i think you work to figure it out with just like anything else in game development. I think we've seen, if you look at anything, most things throughout gaming's history, is that most things that initially don't work out or a bunch of things that fail don't need abandoning. They need tweaking. And then once they're tweaked, they work. But I made a bunch of videos on that. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole again. So yeah, um, those are my thoughts on this, on these bungee layoffs. Let me know what y'all think. Hit the like button, hit the, you know, uh, follow me on Twitter, all that good shit. Every time I make a video about this stuff, it's like, ends up being like 30 plus minutes because the past few weeks I didn't make a video talking about anything. So I guess making up for that. All right, y'all, let me know what y'all think. I'm out of here. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace. I'm trying to think of, was there something else? No, I'm good. All right, peace.